Sharing the good news that you can use as we talk community awareness and keep you in the know. I love it. I am Angela McNeil Woods, known as that Law Hill girl. And today, y'all, I have in the building the official dynamic duo, team, husband and wife combo. But I'm going interview, to interview them individually today <laughs> <laughs> because they both are a force to be reckoned with. I appreciate it. Man, so, but the queen, the queen is in the building. Okay. Publisher, media mogul. Can I say mogul? You can. All right, all right. And, you know, author, et cetera. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, man, I'm so Thank you for having me. Yes, I feel so blessed today. And so, I'm going to do Brian's uh, 60 second thing. So, tell me about Lisa. Absolutely. <laughs> so, you know how that there are so many women who have been through traumatic experience in their lives, and oftentimes they feel as if they have been held down because of the trauma. Yeah. But what actually it is, if they can get to the root of it, they have actually been empowered with knowledge that they would have never come upon True. without that trauma. Yeah. And what I do is I help them to tap into it, yeah. to recycle it, yeah. and to put it on and wear it like a cape so that they can empower their community that they live in. That they live in. Man, you guys, I feel like an eagle right now. Every time That's I'm in, right. <laughs> in you guys' presence, I tell you, it's, it's magnificent. It's eagle time. <laughs> it's eagle time. You have to use that right. right. So, Lisa, first of all, you know, I love the name of your business. Uh, empowerment Publishing, Multi Media, and knowing what I know about you, you definitely know how to empower. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about Empowerment Publishing and Multimedia. So Empowerment Publishing and Multimedia was actually born through my own desire to share my story. I was given an opportunity to share my story after I had already written my book probably 10 years but I couldn't get it published. I didn't know how to get it published. Mm -hmm. And I went, on a re I went on a retreat in Florida mm -hmm. that I practically hitchhiked my way to from Charlotte, <laughs> North Carolina. Yeah. And when I got there, the, the speaker from the stage, she said, everybody who gets their book published by June, mm -hmm. I will do the marketing for you and I will make you a bestseller. That was discovering your why. Wow. Well, she had advised us to use her publishing company mm -hmm for $7,000 that yeah. I did not have. Okay. okay. <laughs> but I wanted to go on to utilize her services. I just had to figure it out. So yeah. I went to YouTube University. I went and took classes. I went everywhere. I did Udemy. I did so many different things. Yeah. And I got my book published and it was catapulted wow. to bestseller status. Yes. At that time, it was really well received in my community, in the in the writing community, because it's honest, vulnerable, I'm telling my truth, some experiences, personal experiences, mm -hmm. but one of the major bits of feedback that I got back mm -hmm. was from other women who had stories that they wanted to tell, wow. and they didn't have $7,000 to invest in. Yeah, yeah. And so that's what birthed Empowerment Publishing and Multimedia, sharing stories of overcoming through self-help, Mm -hmm. personal development and children's books so that women who had been through something could then go on to share and educate yeah. others with their experience. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. That's great. Now, Lisa, you too are a motivational speaker. I am. And a sales coach and author, of course. You yes. Know. What makes you so passionate about what you do? I know you tapped on it. Mm-hmm. But it's a continuing passion. It is. It's a, it's a continuum. 
from the tragedy and trauma that I went through in my early uh, in my early life, mm -hmm. I realized that a lot of situations that children and women particularly went through mm -hmm. was because they did not have the finances yes. or funding to get out of their scenarios. This is true. And so, with empowerment, the empowerment that my husband and I espouse is that economic independence is empowerment. Mm -hmm. So, teaching entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm helping authors to become speakers, helping speakers to become authors, and helping them to become entrepreneurs allows women to have some control over their destiny. Yeah. And I do that, and that is my way of reaching back and pulling through, mm -hmm. making sure that no one has to make a decision based upon their financial situation. Got to stay with this abusive husband. Right. Got to stay in this situation on this job or whatever mm -hmm. because of finances instead of because of what's best for you. Wow. That's good. That's good. Now, let's piggyback to Empowerment Publishing. Mm -hmm. What will the services uh, that you give, what, what will they include? So, empowerment publishing, first of all, there are three different types of publishing. Okay. A lot of people don't realize that. True. Um, publishing, the traditional publishing, the publishing that we grew up on, right? The publishing house, yeah. where they buy the rights to your book and they give you an advance and all those things. They actually own a lot of your project. Ooh, they own questions. what you do with it. <laughs> wow. They own how it's going to get put out. Mm -hmm. They own a lot. And people think that this advance is a windfall, but that advance is just what it sounds like, yeah. an advance right. on your royalties. Right. You don't even get to tap into the royalties that you'll make mm -hmm. from your project until you pay back that advance. Mm -hmm. And then it's only 10, 15 cents on the dollar. So, mm -hmm. and you don't have a lot of control over what happens with your project. You can't decide if they're gonna change the characters, if they're gonna change the story, mm -hmm. or if they're gonna use it for something else, or if they decide, you know what, we're not going to do any, anything with it, and we're going to put it to bed, but you don't own it anymore. Wow. A lot of people think that traditional publishing also means we don't have to market our book. We've got this big company behind us. Yeah. Well, Oprah, mm -hmm. Michelle Obama, mm -hmm. don't you see them on tour with their books? Yeah. They still have to promote their books, wow. and they have big traditional publishing houses going along with their deal. Mm -hmm. But then on the other side of that, the new thing, probably within the last five years or so, mm -hmm. has been self-publishing. People okay. think, self-publishing? Everybody, there's a million self-publishers now. Yeah. People think that self-publishing gives them all the control, but it does. Mm -hmm. It gives them all the tr control and all the responsibility. Yeah, we do. Right? <laughs> so in the first part, it's not free. Right. It might be free to produce nonsense, mm -hmm. but it's not free to produce a published, polished product. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you that means you, if you don't have the personal knowledge and experience, you have to learn how to edit, how to format, how to do digital design, how yeah. to do marketing, how to do uh, copywriting, how to obtain ISBN numbers, all of these things, you have to figure it out for yourself and then you have to figure out how to utilize the tools that go along with it, the uploading tools, all yeah. of those different things. So what happens with a lot of self-publishing people is mm. A, they go on and put out a lackluster product, mm. or B, they get excited about it and then get overwhelmed about it and it yeah. doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Right. I see that a lot. Absolutely. I see that a lot. So with Empowerment Publishing, we, we meet you in the middle. Good. You only pay us for what we do for you. Now, I do offer coaching because I am a coach. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, the book is the last part of the project. Mm -hmm. But what it is with my company, we're called hybrid publishing. Mm -hmm. So you pay us for exactly the pieces and portions that you can't do by yourself. Mm -hmm. And you own 100% of your net royalties on your own. Wow. And if five years from now, mm -hmm. some big company comes to you and says, we want to do a book, we want to do a video, we want to do a whatever, yeah. you don't have to call me and ask for permission. You can call me and say, hey, let's see, we're going to do a book. I'm going to say, yeah, go do it. But you don't have to ask permission because you own all the rights to your project. Uh -huh. It's in your name. 100% of the roy net royalties go to you. When I say net, I'm mm -hmm. specifically clarifying print costs mm -hmm. and distribution costs are subtracted from what you receive obviously it has to be paid to be printed yeah. and paid to just dis to distribute it but you get 100 percent of everything else you only pay me in advance for what i do 
You have answered a lot of questions. They don't have any questions out here. I promise you, we should just get it on the knob. Well, this is not the first time that I've had this conversation. That's right. <laughs> so, so this is good because uh, a friend who is a brand new author, uh, and, and she's a friend of the family, um, Estella Smith. She did Pillow Talk uh, with the King. And a friend, someone else wanted to purchase her book. And this is what I did not know, sis, is that, so I'm thinking I could go in book submitting and just purchase the book. Now, I already purchased my book. You know, I bought the e-book. I did everything. I'm going to support, period, period, period. Mm -hmm. But this particular friend, uh, she doesn't really get out. You know, she doesn't drive anymore. So, you know, so you don't have to, I found out you have to order it on Amazon because it's not like what people think that your books are sitting on the bookshelves in books a million. No, not in a physical store. Now you can arrange to have that way, but let me let me ask you this. Yes. If you are selling something mm -hmm. that people want, mm -hmm. would you want to have it right next to something else that people want that looks exactly like it? No. Exactly. Oh, I think like that. <laughs> yes. Jeez, so <laughs> a lot of people don't think about this. So I'm gonna put my book in a bookstore. Well then it's gonna be in a bookstore with a million other books. Mm -hmm. To meet choices. But if you put your book on your own individual independent website in your own individual store, which you can set up for free, I actually have a class that takes only twenty dollars to set it up, then you drive traffic to your own books. And when they get there, the only thing they can buy is your book. You know how Amazon says People who like this also like this. Right. Well, you might see that and say, well, I like the other one better. You're yeah. not going to see that in my store. <laughs> if, if people who like this, they might also might like this, it's going to be something else a month. Mm -hmm. You, you yeah, see what I'm saying? Right, so right. I'm taking control. Understanding, people don't understand. Amazon is a distribution portal. Mm -hmm. They are not a customer relationship portal. Mm -hmm. So when you collect someone and send them to Amazon, mm -hmm. in essence... You're saying, I know you want to buy my book. My book costs $10. Go to Amazon and buy it for $10. Amazon will give me $7. Or mm -hmm. you can say, here's my book. It costs $10. Buy my book. And I'm going to keep the $10. And I'll keep the relationship with you. Yeah. Amazon is not giving you the relationship. You don't know who bought your book. Yeah. You don't know uh, anything about them. If that's your end game, mm -hmm. that's fine. Right. If your goal is to be a author, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Many of my authors go on to be coaches, consultants, speakers. That means the book is the beginning game. Yeah, yeah. The book is the start to the relationship, the smallest investment that they can make mm -hmm. so that they can get to know me mm -hmm. and then decide whether or not they want to invest more with me. That, that, makes sense. that is awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Entirely publishing. Absolute period. <laughs> now, so is there a charge to review the manuscript? Uh, yes. Okay. So, first of all, you could call me for free. Yeah. You know, we can discuss your project <laughs> and all of that for free. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, I prefer that because I don't take everyone on as a client because everyone doesn't work well with me. Empowerment Publishing also has two big criteria mm -hmm. one is you have to understand that i get first writer re refusal mm -hmm. the second thing is we only do stories of overcoming mm -hmm. now that can be the form of self-help personal development or children's books which a lot of times mm -hmm. autobiographies poetry falls in there but i still decide whether or not it's a project that i want to work on yeah so that first 15, 30 minutes, we can talk it out and you can schedule that time with me. Just go to IamLisaSantiago.com mm -hmm. and you can schedule a, a consult with me there. Yeah. Once we discuss your project there, we identify A, I'm the right person for it. Mm -hmm. B, you understand my process. I do talk about the process the same way that I shared with you. I make sure that they understand what the process is. And then they want to figure out, am I going to go f further with you? Yeah. Well, that's going to take about 60 to 90 minutes to assess okay. because we have to make some determinations in that. Yeah. Remember, I'm a hybrid publisher. So that means I can't just tell you what the price is because mm -hmm. I don't know what parts you're going to be taking. I don't know what pieces and parts you're yeah. going to need yeah. for your project. It's like you come to a real estate agent and you say, I want to buy a house. Mm -hmm. And you don't tell them what the house is, where the house is, or anything right. like that. How much is it going to cost? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Is it going to be in North Carolina or South Carolina? Right. When, is it, when do you need to move in? All of these different things. So ultimately... That 60 to 90 minutes helps us to understand yeah. what you already have, mm -hmm. what you still need, 
um, and how soon you need this project completed. And then we need to understand if there are any other ancillary pieces of parts that you haven't even considered because you don't know the process. Right. So we discuss that and for that session, we do decide if we're gonna move forward together. Sometimes, in many cases, with the discovery session, many of the clients will say, you know what, thank you for this insight, thank you for this information, I have enough mm -hmm. to do it on my own. Because it's very involved, you can yeah. ask questions in it. I mean, you can tell even in this 15, 20 minutes, I'm giving you information. Yeah, so <laughs> in that hour and a half, you're really getting a lot of detail. Yeah. But many of the clients, I wanna say about 85 to 90%, yeah. they say, this is great, when can you do it? Mm -hmm. As opposed to, I'm great, I'm going to go do it. Yeah. You know, so then we assess what the total cost of their proposal is going to be. Yeah. We deduct the cost of the discovery session from it. So that way you, you've lost nothing. Yeah. You've lost nothing. And we determine on moving forward from there. Good stuff. Good. This, uh, so much information, but, but on point. <laughs> Not hard to understand. Thank you so much. <laughs> plain English. Plain English. Yeah. Now, does the author have any say regarding the cover design? The author has all say. They own the project. I essentially work for them. Yeah. Either to perform the work myself, because I do do, do design options myself, mm -hmm. or to contract the work out, depending on the complication of the project. Yeah. So they will have two, typically two to three choices but we don't even design anything until that consultation and if an additional consultation is necessary to know what it is that they're looking for okay 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 so so now i want to talk about the workbook mm -hmm. that you gave me mm -hmm. my pride and joy <laughs> this is right the vision 52 weeks to manifestation mm -hmm. your dreams Absolutely, absolutely. You, you know, this is like I love this um, because you know you you it's a day to day job now. It's, yeah. it's, um, it's like journaling, you know. It is. It's um, a combination of journaling and, and case. absolutely. It's d a combination of journaling and plan and a planner. Yeah. And it used the five steps of manifestation, which is what I use on everything that I do. Yeah. Everything because if we don't realize that we are a product not just of our future, but also of our past, yeah, yeah. then we miss the lessons that we've already learned in this life. Is, this is true. Right? It's true. I get asked that now, would I do, would I do you know, something different? Yeah. I don't think I would. I think everything was purpose. It could be purpose. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And there could be elements of it that we just overlooked because we were in make it happen mode, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So there's something you could do differently. Understand differently doesn't always mean that you did something wrong. Mm -hmm. It just means now with the knowledge I know, yeah. I might do it differently. Uh, just like in, your, in the book, you know, you mentioned about completing and tracking the activities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it helps to reinforce good habits. Absolutely. And, you know, to help move forward on the manifestation. Mm -hmm. Now, I was listening and I was working. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> now, sis, so, you know, you're, you're a wife, you're an author, mother, et cetera. How do you balance it all? <laughs> well, first of all, I never say that it can be balanced all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I wish that I had the answer to balance, mm -hmm. but more than honestly, it is about timing mm -hmm. than it is about balance. Yeah. Because there were seasons, there are seasons when different things take top priority. My children are not babies, they're grown-ups, yes. right? Yes. So now I have more free time to do certain things that are just for me. Mm -hmm. My husband and I are on one accord. We do a lot of projects together. Yeah. So there's not a lot of stress in that area. That's so true. it's really more than balance. It's more about timing and mm -hmm. identifying where more time needs to be applied. So you guys, I'll be playing around. I'll be writing my notes. I'll be getting my notes in. <laughs> I'm always learning, you know? This is good. Now, so I, want to, I want you to tell us about your book, uh, Raised by Chicken. <laughs> Briefly. Raised by Chickens was a book that was birthed um, because of a conversation that I was having with one of my clients at the time mm -hmm. who was struggling with a, a real life um, relationship issue mm -hmm. with her mother, her biological mother who mm -hmm. had been imprisoned. She was in prison since she was very young and she had gone on to, to still to have, she has eight children, mm -hmm. her mother's in prison and she was overwhelmed with this but she was very, very talented. Yeah. And a lot of times we forget 
that where we started is not always where we need to stay. Amen. And so Raised by Chickens was talking about this egg that came and fell to earth in a chicken coop yeah. that was not necessarily a chicken. But the chicken mother mm -hmm. did the best that she could yeah. until she couldn't. Yeah. She wasn't trying to hold her back. She only had this limited insight, this limited understanding. Yeah. And sometimes that person, you're like, why can't you give me more? This is my capacity. Mm -hmm. And then it is time for you to fly. Yeah. And that's what that book is about. It was about essentially, you can't always stay where you start. Yeah. And you don't always grow. You can't just grow where you're planted. Sometimes you have to be replanted. Yeah. And, like that. and yeah. absolutely, that's necessary. Yeah. And it's hard to, sometimes it's hard to receive mm -hmm. because we gain bonds. You know, the eagle loved that chicken mama very, very much. <laughs> yeah. But that chicken mama was not the limit of what she could become. Yeah. And she had to get out and swing, swing, fly with the eagles. That's right. That's right. Now, and the, the thing I love about the way you guys write, you know, you and your husband, which <coughs> I will be interviewing here shortly, you guys. So, you know, but. I don't care what age you are, you know, you, you get the lesson if, if you're really just focused in or on it. Because um, I want you to tell us about the tiniest little acorn. Absolutely. So the tiniest little acorn is a children's version mm -hmm. of discovering your why. Mm -hmm. Understand, discovering your why, a journey to wholeness, yeah. is an um, autobiographical piece. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the people in the audiences that it was first released to, yeah. which was a church and ministry environment, they didn't appreciate some of the language that was in it. Mm -hmm. Because I wrote it the same way I lived it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I'm grateful that God has done some things in my life that I'm not who I was. Yeah. But I couldn't pretty up the past in order to make the, the current more palatable. Yeah. So... They didn't want it, and they, you know, we don't want we don't want this in the bookstore, in the church, or whatever, whatever. So God said, "Give it to them how they can get it, because they still need it." Yeah. And so, raised um, the tiniest little acorn is a story about a tiny little acorn that was left all alone, crushed underfoot, isolated, wet, mm -hmm. secluded, mm -hmm. and all of these things, and they were crying out in the darkness for help. Yeah. And they were identified by the mighty oak tree, yeah. who came along and said, "Why are you crying?" Honey, let me tell you, this, this book right here, I still find myself picking this book up. <laughs> it is, it's, it's, it's part of the Not Just for Children's book series. Yeah. Understand our books, much like Disney and Pixar, mm -hmm. are written on the two levels. Yeah. If you ever go to the movies to Disney Pixar with a niece or a nephew or whatever, you know the kids are getting their entertainment. Yeah. But you see in this whole thing from a different adult perspective. Yeah. And so that's the similar way that I write. If a child picks it up, it's not going to offend them. They'll be entertained. Yeah. But if an adult picks it up, because I'm really in a daycare center, <laughs> and the teachers be like, I'm in it up. I'm in front of my baby. Yeah. <laughs> Can I talk to you? Yeah, you can't have my copy, honey. I'll be like, oh. I'm telling you, because it's true. You understand, by the end of the story, the tiny little acorn says to the mighty oak that I'm tired of being crushed, and I'm tired of being isolated, I'm tired of being set apart and I'm tired of all these yeah. things and the mighty oak tree finally proclaims you observe well but you don't understand the so conditions right. that you are going through right now mm -hmm. are exactly what is needed yeah. for you to become the mighty oak tree understanding your why you have right? to that is, that's exactly what yeah. that is it's so powerful so powerful you got now, now Lisa you dropped some information a moment ago. Mm -hmm. How can they find you, you know, your, your media platforms? So on all social media, that's Instagram, mm -hmm. Facebook, and I think even LinkedIn, mm -hmm. I am the real Lisa Santiago. Okay. I love your name too. Yeah, <laughs> of course I love McNeil on it too. <laughs> I love it. I'll be trying to say Santiago. <laughs> so put an accent with it. <laughs> the real Lisa Santiago. But if your listeners mm -hmm. would go to link.tree mm -hmm. slash the real Lisa Santiago, mm -hmm. they can get a digital copy of my latest journal, which is From Pain to Purpose. From Pain to Purpose. Understand from pain to purpose is 
it is not just a journal. It is a step-by-step -step guide mm -hmm. to understand how to do the heart work, the shadow work, the life work that's necessary mm -hmm. to get that pain and squeeze all the juice out of it <laughs> so that you can understand really what it is that you have. Yeah, I love that call to action. You said link tree? Mm -hmm. Link dot tree. Link dot tree. Mm -hmm. uh, Lisa Santiago. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Absolutely. And I'll give you the whole spelling of it and make sure you get it right. Yes. Okay. So put it in there. Oh, man, this is good. But well, Lisa, first, you know, first and foremost, I cannot thank you enough because I know you guys went to a summit this morning. And you, you, you're always on the road and speaking. So I was, I feel so blessed. I, I, I know I'm privileged to have. I'm grateful for you know, the opportunity guys to be here with you. Come. I appreciate you. Too. Absolutely. I'm, I'm hoping that you'll come back. Absolutely. Yay. I look forward to it. Yay. And so, you guys, again, you know, thanks so much for joining joining us today in, in this session. And you know, just to re reach out to Lisa. It's empowerment publishing and multimedia. You can contact me. Uh, via Instagram, Fantasy Local Podcast, and I can give you the information in the event that you did not, uh, you know, pick up. But just go back and listen. You can you can listen to us on Spotify or watch this session on the YouTube channel, Fantasy Local Podcast. And again, local, not local, but famous around these parts. Thanks so much, you guys. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. Thank you, Lydia. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate you, sis.